70 secret success principles. Principle number one. Forget about your old accomplishments. Definition. There is a great peril in focusing on your old accomplishments as well as ruining your previous failures. That hinders you from making right decisions and acting upon your current needs. Your accumulated experience may prove disastrous, because you place yourself into the realm of fear of making mistakes or lose your head inebriated from your past victories. Moreover, your old habits solidify as years go by and take away from your flexibility. Hence, when something new and unexpected happens, it catches you off guard. Take a story of Nokia and Polaroid, for example. Perhaps you don't even remember those anymore, even though there was a time when they were at top of their games and it seemed that they will remain the leaders of the market for good. There are plenty of pop artists who enjoyed their glory and fame, performing their hits all over again. It seemed that their glory days would last forever. And yet when they failed to offer adoring public something new and kept on milking their old hits, quite dated at times, the public has forgotten about them as quickly as they fell in love with them. Invincibility lies in defense the possibility of victory in the attack. Sun Tzu By all means it is important to analyze your past in order to generate new experiences and skills for further use. That may help you win even when the chips are stacked against you. Warning! You must wage a war for your past, no matter how good or bad it was. You need to do that to redirect your focus and concentrations on things at hand. Forbid yourself to rest on your laurels. Forget about your past accomplishments as fast as you can. Concentrate on things at hand now. You can't assume that whatever made you successful in the past will still work in the future. Perhaps, and it is most likely, that your successful strategy is dated by now. Do away with those as quickly as possible. That is a foundation of your progress, your new achievements and unyielding success. Not only thinking about your past achievements, but ruining your past failures may do quite a bit of damage. As they say, don't regret the past, just learn from it. A lot of people thoroughly overthinking their past collapses and deficiencies, looking for that elusive answer, what could I have done better? And then being under the impression that they have found the solution. They strive to apply it in the future, but the situation around them is no longer the same. And that approach may do more harm than good. The harder any individual is trying to hold on to the old ways of thinking or any of the old theories, the harder it will become to take in the new situation, the new reality, to clearly see the ever-changing world around him. Moral of the story. How do you always win? There is only one approach that works 100%. Every each time, adjust your strategy, adjust your actions to match the ever-changing conditions. That is the reason why there is no universal recipe of success, but there is your capability to be adaptable and responsive, adjusting yourself to the ever-changing conditions, doing away with all your superstitions and unreasonable fears. In our next episode, you will learn an important principle – how to win over a stronger opponent. Principle number two. Turn every weakness of yours into advantage. Definition Time, money, vigor, skills, resources – none of that is limitless. The good news is that those limits are shared by everybody. That is why the winner of any competition will not be the one that has more, but the one who knows how to use what he has. It's no secret that abundance takes away from your resolve and your wit. Wealth very often makes people complacent and smug. Once they lose the grip with reality, they may very well lose everything at certain point, when facing a dangerous opponent who has nothing to lose. Life is not a matter of holding good cards, but sometimes playing a poor hand well. Jack London Limited resources is not the reason for self-defeat. You could always win if you value what you have and use it well. Warning! Remember the golden rule. The more alluring and appealing the price, the more thorough you have to go about assessing what you need to sacrifice to get it, and then evaluate all the pros and cons. Naturally, if you want to hit the jackpot, it takes time and effort to get ready. 
Estimate the overhead, taking incidentals into the account. Sometimes it makes more sense to pass on the scheme, or maybe postpone it, not to exhaust yourself or deplete your resources. Here is another important aspect. Make it a habit not to use more resources that you need, and not one iota more. Excessive expenditures bring defeat. Wastefulness will bring about bankruptcy in a blink of an eye. You shouldn't think that if you're in possession of significant wealth, then you can whistle past the graveyard. You should clearly assess your resources and compare them against the goal you are striving to achieve. Think, is it worth it? Moral of the story. The capability to rope in all your resources to serve one specific goal is paramount to your success, especially when you don't have much. Those who spread their resources thin have a tendency to lose control over the situation and eventually lose. If you know exactly what you want and keep your eyes on a prize, then sooner or later you will get it. You will get what you want. One of the truly paramount resources you could get is support of the others, and it's totally up to you should you get it or not. In our next episode, you will learn the most effective way to persuade others to support you with your goal. Principle number three. Work on your lure. Definition. The more loyal and devoted associates you get, the faster you reach your goal. So how do you lure people into helping you? It is a common knowledge that coercing sooner or later backfires and turns the table on people who implement it. So it is wise to get people to support you on their own accord. Problem is that usually people don't have a reason to do anything for you. Everyone is self-centered. That is the reason why their behavior is dictated by a very simple principle. Get as much as possible when giving as little as possible to get it. The only way to get rid of temptation is to yield to it. Oscar Wilde It should be easy to you to lure a person in, and he would enthusiastically support your cause, should you be able to demonstrate to that person that you hold a key to satisfying his goals. You need to illustrate in clear and simple manner to that person all the benefits and advantages of interacting with you and partnering up with you. And that should be exactly what he needs. Or you could be instrumental in dealing with his pains. Warning. You have to research exactly what makes people tick. First and foremost, feelings and emotions. The most potent being love, fear, greed, envy, hate and pride. Forget about what you want. Forget about your own perspective. Focus on wishes and wants of those you need. Moral of the story. Even though we may be surrounded by tons of people, most of them feel lonely. They all live in their own tiny and muggy worlds. And they have forsaken their hopes to fulfill their dreams. Friendship, support, recognition, attention, maybe even simple heart-to-heart -heart talk. For lots of people, it's an impossible dream. Observe those people, study them, and you will see the missing pieces of the puzzle. You will clearly see what they're dreaming of. Give them what they want, most of all. Lure them in, win their hearts over, secure their loyalty. When there are other people People that are ready to support you, you will gain the opportunities to reach your goals. To learn how to use their loyalty, watch our next episode. Principle number four. Use your brain. Definition. Today there is a certain character that's very popular, a martyr workaholic, person who works a lot, and all he can think about, where can I find extra time, and learn to do 100 things at the same time. People that try to live that way really are making a great mistake. It hinders them to achieve their goal. Being a mindless workaholic never brings any success. On the contrary, it's a road to failure. Truly successful people never look drained and depleted. 
They know the main principle of prosperity and thriving. Never do something that can be done by others for you. That's how the world works, and any business within. Let's take a restaurant, for example. There's only one chef in the kitchen, but he alone would never be able to impress customers with his own cuisine. By the same token, you should be ready to accept Lion's share of profit, become rich and famous, while others settle for less. And don't you worry about that, because he who's worth more will always find a way to rise to the top. Being tenacious and resolute, with unwavering perseverance, it actually may be you who would facilitate that. You know how people say you should help the one who's worth helping, but mind your own interest, and people will think highly of you. The majority of men are not capable of thinking, but only of believing. Arthur Schopenhauer of course, one can talk at length about how world is unfair, or keep trying to reinvent the wheel, trying as they might to find their own unique way, spending years of their lives, or maybe their lives altogether. What's the point? If you can achieve much more exploiting others. Warning. You should headhunt and hire people who can do things you need well. Use the fruits of their labor to achieve your goals. Never break that principle. There are two massive reasons for that. First, there is no such person on the face of the earth who knows everything he needs to achieve his goal. He would always like a skill or a talent. And second, as you remember, no matter how deep your pockets are, your resources are not limitless. Should you miss out on using somebody else's fruits of labor, somebody else will be using yours, and you will join the collective, complaining about life and those people who are exploiting others. Moral of the story. First and foremost, you have to be an entrepreneur. That means all your time and all your efforts should be dedicated at making money. Focus on what you do best, so no one can replace you. Delegate the rest. Somebody else should do the rest. It is not easy to work with other people. You need to know the main principle, how to control everything and not be duped. We'll talk about it in our next episode. Principle number five. Have eyes in the back of your head. Definition. It is only natural to rely on a person that you know for years, but you have to stay alert. History is full of examples when trusty friends would knife one in the back. People are only human. They are prone to emotions such as fear, greed and envy. On top of that, they have a tendency to pick up on things fed to them by the people from the immediate social circle. They instill dark thoughts and doubts. A loss of vigilance and unduly trust into those around you. You let important things go unnoticed and turn a blind eye to things the people do. And they take advantage of that, especially those who seem to know you the best, because they know your weak spots better than anyone else. That is how you lose control over the situation and over your life in the end. The fact is that a man who wants to act virtuous in every way necessarily comes to grief among so many who are not virtuous. Niccolò Machiavelli They say each betrayal begins with trust. Control can never be excessive, but not enough control brings problems that you will end up having to sort out. Warning. There are a few reasons that cause trusting too much. The main reason is sloth. Expectations of gratitude, pusillanimity and false impression of knowing a person well. Sloth. We're not talking about the trust, really. We're talking about you not wanting to spend any time or energy to ascertain things yourself. Your self-talk is, I trust him, he'll do everything right by me. But you know damn well how he usually ends. Expectations of gratitude. Suppose a person owes you, and you expect him to put up extra effort out of sheer gratitude. Forget about that immediately. The more kindness you show to a person, the more impudent he gets. You are the only one who's thinking that he should be grateful, while he believes that he got there on his own accord. And some may actually think that it is you who's not thanking them enough. On top of that, gratitude is a burden. People feel like shaking it off. And the easiest way to do it is to forget about the favor granted and reassign the success only to yourself. Thanklessness is the most common disappointment there is. Pusillanimity. We're talking about yours, of course. You feel awkward having to micromanage. You assume a person may be offended thinking that you may not trust him enough. Don't you worry about that. You gotta learn how to productively interact with people without being unnecessarily abrasive. 
false impression of knowing a person well. Quite frequently we don't really know other people all that well, even though we may know them for a few years at times. That happens when you see a person at the similar situations over and over again. So your vision of that person is lopsided. You have no idea how this person may react to a different circumstance. Also, there could be some different people or circumstances that may affect that person. There is no way you could foresee that. Hence, you should not assume that it all should end well on its own. Just because this person is your friend, whom you may know from elementary school. Moral of the story. Do not give in to temptation to trust someone. Don't get blindsided by friendship or sympathy. Don't even take this person's old merits into consideration. You should control yourself everything that matters. One simply cannot control everything. Hence, you should create an environment where people would be petrified to deceive you. Learn how to do that by watching our next episode. Principle number six. Exaggerate your extravagance. Definition Everyone knows an expression to fish in muddy waters. It means to take advantage of trouble to confusing situation, taking advantage being the key. Majority of people prefer stability, they strive for it. But as soon as something goes awry, they panic and can no longer think straight. Stability gives people false impression of control, leads to indulgence and permissiveness. People no longer stay alert and turn easy prey to those who never play by the rules. Never share details of your plan with anyone. Moreover, never disclose your plan in its entirety. Be ready to be different from what they took you for and act unexpectedly. Let that element of surprise work for you. Do they expect you to be strong-willed and determined? Fake frailty, step back. And then, when they do not expect that from you, come in with full force. The element of surprise, you see. If people look for clear meaning in your actions and words, introduce ambiguity, let them draw their own conclusions. If someone believes that you are sympathetic, give them a little bit of cold shoulder. Put your dissatisfaction on display. Let them know that they have to work for your sympathy. You will become difficult to read. They won't be able to predict your next step, which will make it difficult to affect your next decision. They stand to lose lose initiative, and it will be all yours. Irrational and inconsistent behavior keeps everyone on their toes, pushes them out of their comfort zone. It causes people to lose their grip, act emotionally and silly, make mistakes in your favor. The best swordsman in the world does not need to fear the second best swordsman in the world. No. The person for him to be afraid of is some ignorant antagonist who has never had a sword in his hand before. He doesn't do the thing he ought to do, and so the expert isn't prepared for him. Mark Twain By the way, when people perceive you as being unpredictable, capable of unexpected moves, then it makes sense, every once in a while, to act within the parameters of common sense. On one hand it pacifies people, takes away from their alert state, and on the other hand it confuses them altogether. They lose a grip as to how to perceive you, how to place you within their daily train of thought. They would be totally preoccupied with trying to predict what you're gonna do next. People will have mixed feelings for you, interest, fear and delight. And their imagination will complete the perception of you in their heads, which will be salutary to your endeavors. Warning. If you would like to become a powerful and successful person, then forget about stability. Moreover, it is you who has to become a source of uncertainty and volatility. Otherwise, if you are clearly understood, predictable, you do a big favor to others, because it will become easy for them to make you do their bidding. Once you do something unexpected, do not repeat that move, even if it was a success, because next time it will become predictable and expected. Moral of the story. Make unexpectedness and unpredictability your bylaws. Then only you will control the people around you and the overall progress. No matter which course of actions you choose, there is one principle you have to follow. The one that should help you get on top of any situation. In our next episode, you will learn how to get the chance to always favor you. Principle number seven. Do like lions do. Definition. 
Nothing affects our future like perseverance and determination. Only this and nothing else will determine your success. If you are indeed complacent, you are robbing yourself of a clear chance to succeed. Also, you attract those who can sense your weakness a mile away, and they will use it to their advantage. Even if originally they had no intention to wrong you, you bring about in them ignominious attitude, just by making obvious your inclination to give ground. Confidence, drive, staunch, even if fake, make you look distinguished and powerful to a lot of people. That is why if you are timid and shy, Make sure you deal with it and change that as soon as possible. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. Marcus Aurelius For starters, just pretend to be strong and vigorous and watch your life change before your eyes. No matter how badly your knees may be shaking, act confident, furiously push forward. Keep practicing incessantly, even with insignificant daily routine. Do away with any doubts. Develop a habit of quickly making decisions. Whenever before you were ready to give ground or offer a concession, now look at the situation from different perspective. Stand your ground. Never mind what others would think or say. Do not try to avoid every conflict. Warning. Remember, every time you act unsure and hesitant, giving ground, offering concessions, you grow weaker, lose respect, both your own and others. You destroy your own personality. Moral of the story. Your goal is not to avoid every conflict and be liked by everyone, but to achieve your goals. Your perseverance and determination should overcome every obstacle on your way. Your confidence would elicit fear and respect in others. Others would hold you in high regard and listen to you. The determination, dauntlessness, drive should be developed incessantly. Forget the fairy tale that someone is born brave. Everyone gets scared, feels timid, has doubts. Your goal is not to do away with those, but keep on pushing regardless those mixed feelings. By showing determination, you gain respect in the eyes of others. In our next episode, you will learn how to impress others, to get them to respect you and value you. Principle number eight. Know your worth. Definition. From the early days, everyone gets inculcated with things like don't get cocky, be modest and you'll be good. But being boastful, bragging is unworthy and lowly. This notion has been deeply instilled in people's heads. And then anti-mattering as a form of psychological invalidation has been formed. People are drawn into invalidating everything that matters to them. You can't talk about your success because you'll be bragging. And if people praise you, you have to look down and be modest. And then reply that it is all nothing special. People that know their worth, they're proud of their achievements. Perceived as audacious hotshots. People give them dirty looks, talk behind their backs, and flat out hate them. But envy is the key, and it is painful. It is time for you to realize that it is good to be proud. So be proud all you want. All that was great in the past was ridiculed, condemned, combated, suppressed, only to emerge more powerfully, all the more triumphantly, from the struggle. Nikola Tesla Warning Forget about being modest. Your goal is to stay self-confident, cheeky, arrogant, hotshot. It actually means that you need to put highest priority to your own goals. And those who will trash talk you behind your back are only loudly underachievers. And you should not give a damn about what they say. Moral of the story. Insist on being heard and grab everyone's attention. Your self-confidence should be unwavering, hard as steel. Let the chips be stacked against you, but you should remain as self-confident as ever. And don't take no for an answer, no matter what. It matters not what they think about you, what they say about you. What's important is that, owing to your self-confidence, you will always get what you want. Let the others stand in line for it, waiting for a handout. When you know your worth, others will see things the way you see it and will treat you with respect. And what to do with those who argue and will not see things your way? You will learn in our next episode. Principle number nine. Be like an avalanche. 
definition. Divide and conquer. Always follow this time-tested strategy, should you need to outdo somebody or figure out the way out of a difficult situation. No matter how big the problem would seem, break it down into smaller pieces and deal with them one by one. Keep solving it step by step. Should you find yourself short in resources or capabilities to deal with something big, you can always scrounge something up to deal with something smaller. When dealing with one opponent, do everything you can to leave them without any support. Separate him from his current support network. Hinder his new networking attempts, the ones that are in progress. No man is an island. Seclusion undermines self-esteem and robs a person of any willpower. We read that we ought to forgive our enemies, but we do not read that we ought to forgive ourselves. Sir Francis Bacon Should you find yourself opposing a group of people, find a way to destroy their unity. Remember that on top of the common interest, each one of them has their own personal interests, as well as personal ambitions and emotions. They have internal conflicts, some resentments and grievances, Look for a breach in their unity. You will find it for sure. All it takes is one little brunt and you're on top. Look at the way an avalanche forms up on the mountaintop. Even a tiny pebble creates such force that pushes down thousands of tons of ice and snow and rocks. An avalanche swooshes down everything in its way. That's how incredible is its force. But you do not need to possess such force or any superpowers just to move a tiny pebble. Human nature will do the rest. Warning. Unity packs a lot of power, and vice versa. Detachment drains the power away, makes people vulnerable. Hence, do not allow your power to be drained away. Don't let anybody to drive a wedge between yourself and those near you. For unity is the most valuable asset you have. It's a quintessential survival tool. The moral of the story. Keep the unifying spirit alive in those who surround you. Clear goal, well thought out strategy should be the magnet that attracts and unifies people around you. And do away with the problems using the same principle. Break them down into little tasks and deal with them one by one. However, it should be done in clandestine manner, so your opponents don't see that. Watch the next episode to learn how to do that. Principle number 10. Learn to hide your intentions. Definition. The truth may hurt for a little while, but a lie hurts forever. You heard that, right? Don't believe it. Truth lovers end up with nothing. Keeping your thoughts, intentions and wishes to yourself is way more beneficial. Look how delicately pure people are dealing with it. They never disclose the fact that they are after your money. They only feed you fairy tales about how good your life will be should you make a purchase. The dishwasher will leave your dishes spotless while you're doing whatever you want. This car gives you freedom and self-confidence. This shoe polish will make you irresistible. Would you simply give away your money for the asking? Of course not. That is why PR people that produce ads are top-notch experts in the human nature. The same level of expertise is needed to those who want to be successful in life. Imagine that you have friends that invited you to dinner, but they're not good at cooking. What should you do? Grimace with dissatisfaction or ask for more with gusto? Would you say that this is the most disgusting food you've ever eaten or just praise the sauce? You can choose to be honest and forlorn, but you can choose to ignore misgivings of others and be perceived as the nicest man alive, good friend and partner. A proper upbringing is not when you spill a sauce on the tablecloth, but when you ignore someone else doing that. Anton Chekhov Don't say what you think. Say what another person wants to hear. Flattery, adulation, vague promises, obscure hopes work well. But you need to learn how to use those powerful tools. Backhanded compliments may end up in affront. You need to learn how to be well articulated with praise. You also need to learn how to look sincere doing it. That is imperative. Use innuendo, aspersions and hints. Don't be hasty or straightforward. 
Never let your opponent in a conversation know exactly what you want. Slowly and carefully lead him to it, to make sure that he wants to do for you what you need. You need to form an illusion around him. Focus him on the fact that it is actually for his own benefit. Don't push too hard. Bait and switch. Pushing too hard is suspicious. But indifference, on the other hand, creates an impression that you don't really care for it. Naturally, the other person wants to prove otherwise and do exactly what you want him to do. Do not be a naive simpleton, but it's good to know how to fake it well. People love feeling superior. So, you could be sharper than a pencil. Demonstrate your smarts by being able to hide it when needed. Fake your sincerity. People like that. Believe in what you say. For example, when making a compliment, be sincere about it. Even if deep down you think otherwise, people around you will often mistake sincerity for honesty, and they will trust you. Warning! Never give full disclosure of your plans and intentions. Be vague and ambiguous. Control the conversation. Lead it astray with questioning. You have to be subtle and covert about it, not to create an impression that you're hiding something and dodging questions. Moral of the story. Success is an ability to reach your goals, so polish your networking skills. Always remember that you never need to prove you're right. Just get a person to do your bidding. But even when you know how to cover your intentions, you can still be a victim, manipulated by cunning opponents. In next episode, you will learn what happens to those pursuing freebies. Principle number 11. Always pay your bills. Definition Freebie lovers are banned from the private club of successful and rich. Because people like that are easy prey for those who want to use them further down the road. Successful people are well aware of the fact the only free cheese is in the mouth trap. They know all too well that gifts and free offers are dangerous. Marketing experts use that quite often. They offer a free trial. Luring people into the restaurant offering a free pizza or giving you some trinket as a gift when you're buying something. Pursuing a freebie lures people in that particular restaurant or store and people end up spending a lot more buying something they never planned. As a rule, men worry more about what they can see than about what they can. Gaius Julius Caesar. Always pay for what you get. Be that service, purchase, or some kind of help. Paying right there on the spot, you free yourself from an obligation to do something in return. You no longer burdened by some kind of liability or a bond. Rest assured, no matter how high the price is now, it will be higher still in the future. They will pile the interest on. Warning. Once you accept the gift or some sort of favor, you now feel liable one way or another. That is a commonly known principle that we use to lure you in, to entrap you. That is a human nature. People feel obligated one way or another when they get a gift. Master manipulators are well aware of that. Rest assured, once the moment is right, they will be there to collect. Don't you ever allow yourself to get snared like that. Moral of the story. It is better to stay hungry than go after free cheese. As we know, it is only in a mouse trap. Do not sacrifice your dignity, your peace of mind, your independence for free gifts, no matter how attractive they may seem. You may employ that strategy if need be, but don't get suckered in yourself. No matter how sweet the offer may be, think before you agree. Why is this person so kind to me? What does he want? Always pay your bills. Then you will be in complete control of your own life. Don't let go of your independence. No one should be able to use you. There are specific type of people you should stay away from. You will learn about them in our next episode. Principle number 12. When you weed the garden, get the roots. Definition. 
There are clumsy people in the world. No matter what they touch, it falls apart. These people are problems. The first instinct may be to help them. Stay away from these people. Not only those bumblers are losers, but they manage somehow to lure other people into their misery. You don't need any of that. Live your own life. Try to interact with kind of people who are self-reliant and can deal with their own problems. They don't need a nanny like a little kid. The French people say c'est la vie. That's life. If you don't want to accept any responsibility, don't want to use your own brain, don't need any smarts, then you get what you deserve. These people cannot change, not unless they finally would want to. Yet they will feed you stories, how they really want to change and they need you, because they need your help to become stronger and successful. Pity, compassion, empathy, wanting to help such a person may play a bad trick on you. Then instead of actually helping person like that, you stand to ruin your own life. For him it would be like water off a duck's back. People like that are content with their own lifestyle. They just act that way, to attract someone else's attention and someone else's care. Nature cannot choose its origin. William Shakespeare Naturally, there are some people that need your help and support, but they are completely different, and you could easily tell one from another. Problem people, on the other hand, are toxic, not because they are weak or defenseless, but because they are irresponsible bumblers, they are self-centered, jealous and resentful. They want to get everything for free in life. They count on you doing stuff for them. Out of sheer empathy, you would take their sides, would see things their way. Warning. Ignore their pathetic talk. Don't listen to what people like that saying. Look at what they're doing and at the way they live. Do they really need your help or are they simply using you? Freeloading on your sympathy. To get rid of unwanted weed in your garden you need to uproot it. Invasive weeds are a major problem. Moral of the story. Carefully select the group of people around you. Don't keep whiners and belly aches around. These people are freeloaders and moochers. They will live at your expense. Get rid of such people without any hesitation. Seize all social interaction with them. Don't trust a word. Surround yourself with people who experience joy of life. Self-reliant. Can clearly see the problems and know how to solve them. Make it a point to interact with those who have certain qualities you lack. For for example, if you're a timid person, interact with people who are determined and strong-willed. Get your confidence from them. You know how they say, people judge you by the friends you keep. People around you are indicative of who you are. It affects how people perceive you. In our next episode you will learn, why is it important to control everything around you that is reputation-related. Principle number 13. Keep your promises. Definition Not only you need to know how people perceive you, but you need to be able to control it. When you have a reputation of reliable, responsible and a witty person, people will get attracted to your offers, finance your projects, support you and introduce you to key people. But if you have a reputation of a deadbeat, flaky and unreliable person, then nobody would want to deal with you. Once your reputation is ruined, it is difficult to gain trust. As a nobleman and the head of my family, I have to keep and nourish my honor and my good name, which I shall pass to my children. Alexander Pushkin Build your reputation around one of your key qualities. For example, if you're a wise person or you're bold and gutsy, people, knowing your reputation, will regard you accordingly and will perceive you and maybe even fear you before knowing you. Nobody wants to look silly when arguing with a wise person or get in your way knowing your propensity to retaliate. Warning. In the old days they used to say, on my owner, which meant that you stay true to your word. Today, this is a rarity. Hence, people like that are held in high esteem. You substantiate your responsibility with the most valuable thing you have, your name. That is not only yours, but your children's as well. Any sensible person will think twice about the consequences before breaking a word. Moral of the story. Your reputation is your asset. You need to nourish it and protect it. 
It affects everything that is related to you, everything that you do. When people hold you in high esteem, then your words and your actions carry around a lot more weight. And people will likely go along with what you have to say because of your higher standing. If people perceive you brave, smart, determined, then it is likely that people will not stand in your way. Your opponents will stay at bay, because they will think that going to war with you is too much of a liability. Your reputation will ease your way to achieving your goal. It is important that those around you would hold you in high esteem. Gain a reputation like that, using a principle you will learn in next episode. Principle number 14. Stake your claim. Definition. Stay confident, and then people would perceive you as a bold, self-reliant person. Respect yourself, and the others will follow. Know your worth, and people will value you accordingly. You have to find it within yourself to stake your claim to what you want, and then you'll get it. If you want the others to respect you, first, and that's the main thing, respect yourself. Fyodor Dostoevsky Support your image by keeping your distance. Do not entertain those around you at their level. On the contrary, augment your superiority. For example, flaunt your education. You should exude noble-like self-reliance, not arrogance. Warning. A lot of people think that they're being treated unfairly. They don't get any respect and not perceived how they wanted it to be. It's their own fault. These people don't watch what they say, they don't watch their manners, their look, they act shy, they grovel, constantly asking permission and saying sorry. People around them pick on that and act accordingly. So these people get what they deserve. Moral of the story. Above all, you have to believe yourself in your own merit your authority, your essentiality and upshot. That creates specific air of importance around you. Other people most likely need nothing else but what they see. If they can see you being that self-reliant, they think you have a reason for it and will think of you accordingly, regard you as such. Self-confidence could be disarming to others. Now for the final victory you need to get devious. You will learn about that in our next episode. Principle number 15. Entrap them. Definition. Be the first one to lend a hand. Support them in difficult times. Offer your friendship. Present valuable gifts. Show care. Beguile people with your attitude. Make them believe that they owe you. Help them get their feet through important doors. Share your ideas. Offer attractive perspectives, possibilities. You can catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Jean de La Fontaine It often seems that you can offer nothing of value to others. Don't be too hasty with your conclusions. Everyone needs something. Your task is to see what is it exactly. Forget your stereotypes and listen to what people have to say. What are their needs? What are their pains? What are their dreams? Warning. When you're doing something for a person that he cannot do himself, he will develop certain gratitude. Remember that gratitude is the most fleeing sensation of them all. That is why it is really important for you not just to do a favor, but that a person at certain point will have to reciprocate, and no other way around it. Moral of the story. At a certain point, do for another person something simple. Sometimes something insignificant is enough, and the person will want to reciprocate. It is easier to achieve your goal helping others, but even having this powerful resource, you stand a chance to get stuck halfway. If you miss something important, watch the next episode to dodge that bullet. Principle number 16. Go backwards. Definition It often happens when people start something, not knowing what they want to get in the end. So go backwards. Then the way will seem clear. And don't be too naive to presume happy ending. You have to clearly understand what you want and what you have to do to get that. Are you ready to apply enough effort? 
stay focused on your goal. Do not deviate. You need to have a tightrope walker's concentration. Put one foot on that tightrope after another. Keep your balance. That keeps you from falling down. And then step by step you will get to the other side. There should be only one thing on your mind. Get to the other side. And then nothing will stop you reaching your goal. It is difficult to walk at one and the same time many paths of life. Pythagoras. Warning. First, you should know exactly what you've been doing at specific point of time and have a plan B in case something goes wrong. You shouldn't think that you'll stay lucky all the time. There's always something that goes not according to plan. You should be ready for that. Second, if you entered the deal that seemed much smaller in scale than it actually is, you will deplete yourself, spend all your money, time, resources and in the end you'll get nothing. You need to work on due diligence when it comes to planning altogether. Third, according to François Rabelais, appetite comes with eating. Taste of victory is inebriating. It seems that everything is possible. History is full of examples when exaggerated appetites brought in disasters. Remind yourself of the Roman Empire, about its greatness and demise. Don't get greedy. Avoid euphoria. Be realistic in your plans. Keep the situation and your ambitions under control. It is much better to set yourself achievable goals and patiently get there, rather than biting off more than you could chew and suffer the lack of results. Moral of the story. Only achievable, specific goals will keep you on the track, will keep you focused and overcome every obstacle. Now you know enough to be successful, but you don't know all. Only one principle remains, the main one, how to stay on top in the long run. You will learn about this in our next episode. Principle number 17. Wait for the right moment. Definition. Thread lightly with caution. Plan thoroughly every detail. Take detours as often as possible. Then your plan would be difficult to predict. When the moment to act comes, nobody would expect anything. And you will be all set for your winning maneuver. Don't waste any time. By the time they will figure it all out, you will be on top. Winning little by little, you are reducing their vigilance. They don't see a big threat. Hence, they don't see a reason to put up a fight. They would not want to start a war over something measly. They would not want to waste their effort, money, time. It is cheaper to lose something insignificant rather than fight for it. But gradually, step by step, you'll get everything you wanted. The main thing, be quick and resolute when it is time to act. That element of surprise should put them in a state of disarray, get them all confused and hopefully panicked. Once you win, you'll move up to a different league, gain the reputation of a man who's brave and resolute, a force to be reckoned with. Ask for advice from someone who knows how to conquer himself. Leonardo da Vinci Warning! Being patient does not mean being late. On the contrary, following others, observing their mistakes, you learn a lot. Let them hastily show you the road to success. And you keep your strength. Wait for a moment when it's a good time to speed up. Just like in track and field, when there's one athlete leading for the whole run, but right before the finish line, someone else sprints and wins. The one who stayed back, the follower, who was waiting for his chance to overtake the leader. He was waiting for the moment when no one will be able to counter his actions. Moral of the story. In real life, the one who's cool gets on top. Patience is the main virtue you need to develop in order to succeed. You need great willpower, composure to hold off for the right moment. Those who can do it always win. And he would be the one who gets the last laugh. Nowadays, there's a dominant concept that it's good to be good and bad to be bad. Nevertheless, we could see good guys lose to those who don't play by the rules. Because you can't hide from human nature. Greed, envy, fear, affrontery, depravity, grotesque ambitions. They move people, like in the old days. And not just to survive in the modern day society, but succeed. Be able to protect what's important. Stop being naive. Learn the real rules of the game. 
Use these 17 principles of success. They will facilitate your achievements.